while we're getting uh, the our last speaker up on stage, I think Dean, we can start with an introduction to. Uh, well, I'll introduce our space, and we can start with an introduction to orchestration. This is the first orchestration call that uh, that we're going to be hosting. This is something that on the Agoric side we'll be doing periodically um, in place of our community calls. So be sure to check in here so you can get the latest on what's going on in the orchestration space. If you want some more information about it, you can read uh, the new post we have on our website at agoric.com slash blog about the orchestration post. And uh, I'm really happy to introduce the all-star cast that we've got <laughs> joining us uh, for our uh, for our piece today, um, Dean uh, Dean Tribble joining us on piano. He's an accomplished piano player. In case you didn't know, uh, Cryptocito on violin, Zucky Manian on saxophone, Roland Grouse on drums, and on the calypso side uh, we have John Di Bernardi who is playing guitar. Um, that's just my fun little musical references. <laughs> um, but uh, sorry to be clear, Roland Cowbell. All right. Um, Without further ado, then, I think let's kick this off. And uh, Dean, if you could give us an introduction, what is orchestration? We've been talking about it a lot. Yes, absolutely. So orchestration is, you know, grows out of the work that we've been doing in, 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 in building a platform and in JavaScript and so forth. Orchestration is really the programming power to, you know, to coordinate asynchronous activities across multiple systems to, in order to provide a unified experience for users. And so this is something that JavaScript has done for trillions of dollars over, over Web2. Um, it's, it's, and it out, grows out of how we built the system that we have uh, for programming in JavaScript, to, and, and it rolls up into enabling simple, straightforward programming uh, using the assets on other chains, the services on other chains, um, the, the you know the, the applications on other chains to pull together into into unified experience. That's kind of the 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 you know the the, the quick summary of what it is um, and 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 how it you know relates to all of the JavaScript power we've been putting together um, over the last uh, several years. So and, and you know some of this was 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 you know the, some of the re the the guests here today helped us understand how important that was. So, Zucky, if you can speak on more of the problem it solves in the crypto space, uh, that'd be great, and then we'll go into others here. So, I guess the, you know, the way I sort of think about, you know, Agoric and its role in this chain abstraction situation is, you know, this, um, a lot of work over the last, I don't know, five, maybe 10 years of, uh, of uh, cryptocurrency research and engineering and development is coming together today with this like explosion of execution environments where it's become cheap and fast and easy to spin up on you, your own blockchain, to customize that blockchain, to have it, to build a community around that blockchain. Uh, you know, we have this, we have you know, a reasonably large number of apps starting to, with like tens or hundreds of thousands of users starting to materialize. Um, and so this has been, this is like a huge accomplishment. Um, but the, but the challenge that is, uh, is sort of, or like what has been coming for a long time and is now the sort of next stage of this evolution is, well, I'm a user. Uh, how do I interact with many blockchains? How do I move? Uh, how do I like? Uh, you know, the experience is very common. Of okay, well, I I have some uh, assets or tokens or things I want to do on one chain, you know, and it's and you have this like never-ending nightmare that is the current situation. You know, I was trying to buy like <laughs> warps on base. I was trying to you know you like all these simple things like buy warps on base, uh, claim your dimension airdrop. Uh, Liquid stake your Tia. Uh, all of these things are these actually really complicated flows um, that like are really challenging for end users and are a sort of sort of foreseeable net result of this explosion of execution environments. And I think like one of the questions that um, we sort of ask is, okay. Is, is it worth trying to build up Agoric or was it the right thing to do is to position Agoric as um, yet another one of these execution environments? Or is it 
something that really plays to the unique strengths of the Agoric platform um, to say, this is the place where you build apps that are, uh, that, that tr sort of tra transcend any one execution environment and really captures what the user's goals and intents are. So that's what you're doing, right, Roland? <laughs> well, actually, I want to. <laughs> yeah. Wanna, uh, yeah. Yeah. Let, go, let, go. Go ahead. I, dude. I was saying, let, let, let's jump to that in a moment. Um, uh, we have uh, uh, Cryptocito here, who um, uh, you know more people know him than 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 uh, well everyone here, but Zucky probably. Um, but uh, uh, I wanted to get uh, you know did did that problem statement did that challenge did that need make sense do you have questions from that as sort of you know your 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 brain coming from the giant world of the community out there that's uh that's a good question yeah and i think also like my brain not being technical at all mm -hmm. uh, it always it always takes me a lot of time uh, to understand these things i remember like the first time I interviewed the, the Celestia guys, John Adler, back in like November 2021, I was talking about modularity and all these terms. <laughs> and it's like, what the what what the hell does that mean? Like, why why is this a game changer, right? And I uh -huh. think your your explanation like is good for like technical people, but also considering you know we're we're in Twitter, there might be less technical people like myself. I'm not technical at all. Mm -hmm. What is kind of the the pitch to the kind of retail general crypto community that is like okay, we want to understand why this is a game changer for the crypto space without going into the depths of like technical jar jargon. Good, okay. So let me, let so me I try heard... something on you here and you can clarify. Uh, and and let, me, let me add add one and then I'll let, I'll let Roland in here. Because um, this came up recently a couple of times and, and, ab and, and getting it to that point is absolutely critical. In web two, you know, I, I open DoorDash, I order food, and it arrives, right? I got this very simple uniform user, inter you know, user interaction, and I have no idea which parts of that whole thing involve how many different companies where some things are running on AWS and some things are running on Google, right? The, 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 that, you know, Zucky used the term chain abstraction, that ability to hide the details the user doesn't care about in order to provide a simple experience, turns out providing a simple experience across a variety of services and applications is really hard. And so what this lets you do is do the programming so that developers out there can provide those simple experiences that like, you know, Zucky was talking about. Right now, it's really hard to take your Atom in one place and stake as Osmo in another. And that ought, and the user experience of that ought to be easy, but that doesn't. But but making that happen is is exactly orchestrating the activities of of your account on Osmosis and on Atom and you know through through bridges and 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 all these other steps that the user doesn't care about in order to accomplish their straightforward goal. And so what this does, it unlocks it. It makes those straightforward and it unlocks sort of the next. The, the next level of having applications that span all my multiple assets, the multiple services available in the crypto space, the multiple application chains, where I don't care about going to an application chain, I care about getting that application in combination with something else. I care about taking my money and putting it into an UMI position or putting it into a liquidity position or what have you. Is that higher level for you? Yeah, that, um, yeah, I think also, you know, then, you know, just thinking about it, because this sounds to me like, you know, my, my early kind of Celestia days trying to understand this modularity <laughs> and stuff. And I think what really clicked for me then was like hearing over and over, you know, separating the execution uh, layer from the settlement layer and being able to like just combine these different tech stacks. So I think, you know, I think that the end goal sounds like, okay, that's a, that's a big mission, obviously, like chain abstraction, just, I guess, also making the whole experience in crypto and web3 like much more intuitive and just get rid of all that complexity and like to be to be honest still to this date because like i mentioned the dime uh airdrop that just came out right like i mean non-crypto people that are not glued to to the screens 12 hours a day like we all are they they don't know like uh, what they're even doing right like sometimes i don't even know what i'm doing when i'm clicking around <laughs> so i think the end goal is clear and i think that's also kind of aligned i think the question is like just how is Agoric right. positioned to really stand out from the competition, right? I also feel like we're in a, in a, in a, 
phase of the crypto revolution now where there's a lot of mind share flowing in, right? A lot of money and capital flooding into the market, into this technology. So yeah, maybe how is how is Agoric positioned today to to be able to like tackle those those issues um, with this new narrative moving forward with this orchestration thesis? Sure. Uh, so I'll jump in there. Uh, thanks, Cito. And, and this is Roland at Agoric. Um, and, and I'll also, maybe I'll try to answer that as well with some specific examples of what's happening in the space and what this gives developers that they can do that is difficult otherwise or potentially impossible otherwise. Um, so there are a lot of folks, especially within the Cosmos space, where this this challenge around lots of chains interoperating has been part of the design philosophy since the beginning. You know, I, I, I like to say, I mean, this group is probably the most forward thinking around how to deal with that that we have in the crypto space in general. Um, and so you've seen applications spring up that do cross-chain things and try to improve UX, right? So Squid does a great job of doing cross-chain swaps. Uh, the Skip router and uh, Skip APIs, they've done a whole lot of work on IBC unwinding it and that sort of thing, um, which has really been targeted at trying to improve these same sorts of things. Um, but where they fall down is because it is actually quite difficult to string multiple separate actions together with one user signature. And that's not a limitation by, by Squid or Skip, it's a limitation within sort of the, the rails they're using in Cosmos that allow them to, to uh, you know, specify these multi-hop IBC routes and things like that. You, you can do one thing and get an acknowledgement. It is really hard to get that acknowledgement and then follow up on it. And so um, where, where Agoric contracts come in and where orchestration comes in is being able to, to sort of continue those operations. And so not just make a swap on osmosis, but make a swap on osmosis, react to that, and then bring that over to a lending position or something along those lines. And so you start to get the composability in the multi-chain space that you would expect, you know, in a blockchain ecosystem, uh, and developers can then build those easy experiences. And and so in particular, the the how here for, for how Agoric actually uh, accomplishes this is really that our, our platform is natively async, right? So contracts on Agoric speak to each other asynchronously even within the own, uh, the same blockchain but that means that to a developer that wants to do something outside of the agoric blockchain it actually is semantically similar or even the same to to uh, send a message that may need to wait multiple blocks to complete versus one that happens within the same block uh, and so from the agoric perspective contracts and actions are long lived and so we have this async await and multi-block execution where I can just say, await the response here, and then the contract will continue when the response comes in. Um, and so it allows just a, a completely unique capability around managing more complex multi-block transactions than we've, we've seen in the space so far. Um, and, and so we have, we have a bunch of other specific differentiators too that, that help make this easy, but I, I wanna give Dean a chance to jump in here too in, in case he wants to add context, because really you know, the async await and multi-block execution really yeah. drive a lot of this. Yeah, and, and, you know, and that came out of JavaScript, that came out of, of, of you know, what we think of as smart contracts are long-lived durable processes, being able to say, you know, unbond, and then a week later go to the next line of code after the unbonding is completed and transfer over to some other chain. You know, that's a straightforward thing to program in Web2 in order to do this impossibly interesting, you know, uh, uh, pull together these different services, and, and, and that's what we now enable. Um, some of that was inspired, uh, you know, we, we were already doing this, but it was... Uh, a, a team uh, from Mystic Labs that 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 helped us realize just how unique it was, just how impossible it was from the perspective of other of of other developers. Um, and so, um, so first, let me stop to see if uh, if if Crypto, you had uh, Cito, you had any any questions about what Roland said there, or sort of these the unique benefits, and then oh. otherwise we can dive into kind of how they're using it and that sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, one question, one follow up to that, uh, you mentioned also uh, this more kind of multi block execution, like, does that mean or, or maybe there's uh, another question like how, how, wh what kind of category within crypto is Agoric optimized for, right? Obviously, we have with we inter IST, uh, over, mm -hmm. over collateralized stable token. Um, but like moving forward, do you kind of plan to like, optimize for a specific category, whether gaming or DeFi or what's the game plan there? 
<laughs> so we'll talk a little bit more about the game plan there at the end. Really, there's themes of this uh, of what this infrastructure does. So the first theme is very much DeFi and liquidity, where it's not how much you know how much can we lock onto Agora, but rather for an application, what's the total value accessible across all the conveniently reachable chains, right? And if I can easily write an interaction that includes assets on Osmosis and assets on 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 Umi and assets that are across, you know, uh, uh, Axel or some other bridge on Ave, that's a much richer, more powerful uh, thing. And so we'll focus on that. So so the 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 focus here is the, the first theme is on um, enabling cross chain seamless cross-chain smart contracts in JavaScript for DeFi and liquidity. Second focus, you know, the, later in the year will be the same kind of thing for NFTs, and we'll spend a lot of time on that, um, you know, in, in when we're back, you know, uh, when we're back here in, in three or four months. But um, so that's that's the focus is let's get, you know, let, let's get this cross-chain seamless contract support out there for people building applications, not just in Cosmos, but that reach across to, to, to other chains uh, from Cosmos and, um, and, and get that ball rolling. <laughs> yeah, I would say one way to think about it is, is really focusing on being the composability layer across other multi-chain, you know, across the multi-chain ecosystem. So as we see really interesting capabilities spring up on specialized blockchains somewhere else, um, you know, having contracts being able to orchestrate that capability and combine it with something else um, on some different chain really is where we will shine. And we, we kind of expect there's going to be an explosion of those possibilities. So so the, the Mystic Labs team, I'll jump in here and introduce them because they can also talk concretely about this. So so th this is the, the team that built the uh, Cosmos uh, MetaMask Snap to be able to use MetaMask um, generally across a, a lot of Cosmos chains. And they've been, you know, and they've been working on the Agoric stack and built several of these async orchestration kinds of pieces that they're all pulling together into their application. So if uh, one of John or Joe want to speak to that, first, please introduce, you know, just give a quick summary of, of what the problem that, that, that Calypso is solving, and then let's talk about how it uses Agoric to do that. And that may answer some of uh, uh, Sita's questions here. Definitely. Thanks, Dean, for the intro. Appreciate it. Um, yeah. John, so, everyone. Yeah. Nice, nice to meet everybody. John from Mystic Labs and Calypso here. Um, so the real question that Calypso is answering is, how do we get people that don't know how to use crypto the way it is to actually use crypto, right? And, I, you know, we're in Cosmos space. You guys obviously know that there's a huge, huge learning curve to actually get into the space, you know, downloading multiple different wallets and IBC transfers and staking and yada, yada, yada. That if you tell a person that might know what Bitcoin is, how to get this, that it's just going to go in one ear at the other. So what Calypso is really accomplishing is just fully optimizing the entire crypto experience from start to finish, right? Um, onboarding through offboarding, right? Uh, optimized through just using the email address and trading uh, through Bitcoin, Solana, Ethereum, and Cosmos. And this is all made possible through the Agoric, not just the, the tech stack, you know, the ease of building using the, the, the hard and job, but the orchestration aspect is key here. And this whole orchestration aspect really means how can we control things like an orchestra on other chains? How can we make things happen without actually having another wallet, having another yada, yada, yada. And this is through use of interchain accounts and, you know, Axelar GMP and a couple other implementations that are built, that were built in other places, but now are on the Agoric side that make this possible. And when you put all of these different things together that, you know, send messages and essentially actions to different chains to uh, complete desired results, um, you actually start to make crypto feel like crypto, you know, the way that it's it's kind of sold, you know, the way that we everyone tells what crypto is supposed to be, the super efficient, um, game changing thing that is going to do all these amazing things for the financial industry and yada, yada, yada. Well, now that's actually starting to come together because of things like orchestration. So that's really what we're concentrating on. And that's what we're building with Calypso. And we're pioneering this. Um, we're, we're starting this with something that we're we're going to call a staking widget. 
and the staking widget is using the orchestration from Agor Agoric, and essentially uh, it allows you to stake with any token to any chain. But, um, we're starting with Ethereum, all EVM chains and all Cosmos chains. So pretty much, if you only own Ethereum and you want to stake Osmosis, you just press stake Osmosis, and it will automatically handle everything in the background for you, and vice versa. So that's kind of how we're, we're previewing what this what this this calypso contracts and what the orchestration on the gork is really capable of so just a little intro there and let me uh so so in my in, in presentations we've done i've had little snippets of code that are of the flavor you know as they unbond on osmosis move it over you, you know when that's done the very next line of code when that's done move it over to ave and 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 when that's done then stake it there or trade it for something and stake it there you know, those snippets came from snippets of code out of Calypso, but that's that, you know, that, 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 that sort of, in some sense, key magic of orchestration is what Roland said. Start one thing, and, and then in the next line of code say, and when that's done here, do this next thing, right? And do it in a way that, that millions of programmers are already familiar with building. That turns out to be really hard. That's the magic that that the uh, you know the unique benefit that the Agoric execution platform has has built over the years and now has working you know in production and available to everyone to build. And so that simple thing, I describe it so easily, but it's you can't do that on other platforms. Okay. And and, and I just to say, it took us a long time to realize that that was hard elsewhere. I, yeah, I think yeah. it came as a surprise to a lot of our team. That's right. And so that means we can fold in timers. That's another one of the examples where you could add timers to other chains potentially, but here it's already done. It's deterministic and it's just wait for three o'clock and then do this other thing or wait for a ton bond, then wait another 30 minutes for something else to happen and then do some other thing. So being able to coordinate these activities around time and around and around waiting for changes in the system is, is that, that, that powerful magic that enables this next class of application. Um, we've, so. we've talked a lot about uh, the different features of orchestration and sort of that make it all possible. Um, but in the last couple of minutes, I would love to um, sort of get some input on how this uh, how this could impact the state of the market. What are the trends that people are seeing, uh, you know, in the multi chain space right now? And, you know, where does orchestration fit in? Who's getting excited about it? Um, Cryptocito, do you want to uh, lead us off and uh, talk on that for a minute? Um, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I'm always kind of at the pulse of, you know, what, what the community is excited about. And um, I also think one huge kind of launch this year that everyone is looking forward to now, uh, amongst others, is obviously the launch of Eigenlayer and this whole kind of restaking thesis, which also maybe fits into that whole multi-chain uh, philosophy and, and roadmap that crypto is going in inevitably. So, yeah, I don't know if there's any kind of use case or direction that you guys are going with the or or orchestration thesis with restaking, like, is there any kind of overlaps or? So there's quite a bit of overlap, you know, in some sense, those are do a lot of work to build a particular single use case. Um, and so, you know, and, and, and um, so you've got in, in the, in the space, you've got, people building particular use cases or a few use cases that work across multiple chains. I can lay an example. We've seen, you know, the, the, the end end use case for, for squid router of, you know, of uh, start a transaction with assets here, move them over there and stake them. And that's, you know, and so those are the use cases that people want. Um, there are a couple of ways of, of implementing them. One is, you know, really challenging. Another, maybe Zucky can speak to about occasional app chains that are, you know, that, that like like Psalm, that are building a cross-chain use case as a full-on app chain. And then there's the the execution environment, the, the orchestration environment of Agoric, where you can write those things in JavaScript to do those particular use cases broadly across multiple chains. Um, and so, the going after restaking, you know, going after like the the staking widget that John was talking about as the the first thing of Calypso, but all the other things in Calypso and and you know like Dex aggregator project that's that, that's building on Agoric, are you know take advantage of the applications on other chains, take advantage of the the services 
on these app chains to build an application that uses those services, right? You know, we've got multiple lending services, but if I want a portfolio manager that can handle multiple of these off different, on, on, on different chains in a uniform fashion, how do you program that as a smart contract so you get all the integrity of execution of a smart contract, um, but still you're using these services uniformly across these different chains? And so that, you know, that kind of portfolio manager that's using services on multiple chains is, is an example. I'll let, you know, Zucky can, uh, you know, if you want to touch on other examples of chain abstraction that people are pursuing um, that, that, that we'd like to see getting built on Agoric, that'd be, uh, that'd be useful. So I guess one way in which I would uh, sort of link this sort of um, explosion of interest that is happening around restaking. Um, and so like one aspect of restaking is basically uh, you know, restaking is essentially leverage staking. It's okay. I earn the base yield of some protocol for some amount of slashing rules, and I opt into new slashing rules uh, for more yield. Uh, and right now we're sort of in this like very speculative phase of restaking, where the yields are all hypothetical. Um, uh, everybody, everyone is is free to imagine. Uh, that their airdrop or their points are going to be worth any arbitrary amount of money. Um, but we're going to transition, you know, this probably within the next couple of months um, into, you know, these airdrops happening um, and then concrete yields. Uh, and we're going to, you know, now have people like staking is going to become a, is, is going to become a much more complex and, uh, and uh, multi-layered uh, activity and the question is, what are the products that people are going to build to give sort of uh, people access to those uh, and like sort of make sense of those opportunities? Like, you know, I do think that like, I think it's going to be very cool when you suddenly see, um, you know, right now there's like been, there's been like, like basically for every asset, there's been one staking yield. Uh, there's like an ETH staking yield, there's an AM staking yield, there's a TS staking yield. Uh, Post restaking, we're going to start seeing more, uh, or you know, there's going to be uh, 10, 20 different ETH staking yields that you can choose from. Uh, when you see, when you know, restaking comes to other assets in the sort of proof of stake ecosystem when it comes to Bitcoin, it's going to be the same thing. There's going to be a lot of different yields to choose from. I think chain abstraction and apps are then going to become, uh, you know, sort of necessary for people to like manage these portfolios of all of these different assets and exposures in any sort of reasonable way. Uh, you know, I think, I think the last thing that we want to do is recreate C DeFi. The, the, the most toxic aspect of the last cycle, the Celsius's of the world were created by, Hey, I want DeFi yields, but we're going to set up the centralized platform and the centralized platform is going to go and do all my leverage for me. Uh, that was what sommelier was designed. Uh, you know, this is Christie's vision uh, for sommelier is like, you know, build a Celsius that cannot rug its users. I think we need an entire family of cross-chain app abstraction apps for the next cycle um, and the site for, you know, the next few years um, that allow people to have, you know, to, to manage their portfolios, optimize their yields, participate in these systems. Uh, but we need systems that can't rug their users. And I think, you know, you talked about the making it easy, make it also easy from the user perspective. Another simple example that I'd expect to happen relatively soon, we've got folks who have been working on atomic swap for a long time. Being able to do atomic swap across chains turns out to be hard. Um, you can't do that very well right now, but that'll be the next step. You know, and you've got things like skip routers, that Roland mentioned, that off-chain can do some amount of trade through X, then to Y, then to Z in order to get that final, you know, X to Z transition, but it can't do split swaps where part of it goes through one, you know, through, through, through Astropart and part of it goes through osmosis or whatever, right? And it can't do stream swaps where we break it up into chunks. And it can't do, you know, calculated finance is cool where it can do incremental buy and sell into a market in order to build up a position, but it can't do a thing where it's going to, you know, um, uh, withdraw from one LP fund in order, you know, in order to do that, that, that incremental buying over time. So every day it withdraws a little bit and buys a little bit more. 
because that requires talking on multiple chains at once and doing something, uh, um, you know, and, and doing orchestrating that activity across multiple chains. Those are examples where, from the user's perspective, it was still just, yeah, make this swap. But underneath the covers, you know, you got much more power, much better prices, and much better user efficiency if it's able to do the splitting and the routing and the, and the chunking and all these kinds of things. And you want it to do that on-chain, not off-chain, right? You don't want to have the need for those simple user experiences drive these use cases into black box off-chain things that are now in a position to rug you or, or, or do other things. You want it to be transparent, executing on-chain in a way that you've got all the assurances that we build these systems uh, to provide us. And so enable, that's what I mean by that next generation of apps. The use cases are kind of similar to what we have today. They're just better. They're just more, you know, easier uh, for the user to absorb and they enable, you know, provide, you know, combining these services across chain. I mean, that's all I want, right? Is that so much to ask for? I don't think so. Uh, you want the Zucky best deal across the, uh, across the cryptoverse <laughs> all in one place? <laughs> right. It's uh, easy. Sure. Um, well, I mean, you you all did such a great job of explaining some of these concepts that it makes it seem really easy. And uh, I mean, it it also gives me a new appreciation for all of the challenges that uh, the people building in this space face every day to make the end user experience, um, I mean, palpable, <laughs> um, among other things. Um, but thank you all so much. I know we ran over a little bit, but all of that information seemed like it was totally, totally worthwhile. Uh, check out a few posts underneath this space post if you want to see some of the resources we mentioned, like the blog post on orchestration or the Agoric events page. Um, speaking of events, anyone who's coming to East Denver, we are tearing it up in Denver. Um, uh, Agoric will be at Adam Denver, App Chain Day. We have our own orchestration splash event, uh, Chain Abstraction Day, and Frictionless, among other events. We'll be around Around that week as part of the uh, wider group of people who are representing Cosmos at East Denver. Um, and yeah, follow our uh, events page if you want to stay up to date because we're doing a ton of different um, in-person events around the world this year and uh, virtual events as well uh, around orchestration. If you have any other questions or always want to follow up with us, you can reach us here on Twitter or excuse me, X formerly known as Twitter or join our Discord where most of the team is pretty active and we also have a community forum as well. Thank you all for joining us and stay tuned. We'll post the recording uh, later. Have a great Thanks. day, everybody. Thanks, Zucky. Thanks, Cito. Thanks, Joe and John. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.